1977, this legend was trying to write songs for a new record. He was looking forward to it, but it wouldn't come. The weather where he was recording, it was so dark and cloudy around him, it just sent him into a funk. Down and depressed, he battled writer's block and couldn't write for weeks, couldn't write one word. He drowned his sorrows at the pub. He spent more time there than in the recording studio. But one morning he woke up and the sun came out. It shook him from his gloom, inspired him to write 13 songs in a little over a week, including a classic hit that he wrote about a superhero. It was inspired by a silly TV show he loved as a child. It sounded like a kid's song. It was recorded with percussion that was played on a fire extinguisher, for heaven's sake. It was so powerful, so singable, astronauts would use it as an alarm in space. It would be voted the happiest song ever, and it's become an all-time classic we listen to every day. The story is coming up about this master next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you have ever stood in line for what seemed like an eternity to get uh, overpriced merch at a concert, you're gonna love this channel. Subscribe below right now to be a part of our community. We do this every day. You can get insight directly from the legends. And also take a look at uh, our other content at our Patreon link below to become a curator of this channel with us. It helps us keep the music alive. You know, we've, uh, we all have special childhood memories, you know, of a cartoon that we loved or a comic book character, maybe a TV show. And of course, our favorite songs that we sing along to while growing up. When I was a kid, uh, I loved Spider-Man. I used to watch Spider-Man and his amazing friends every Saturday morning, you know, Firestar and Iceman. Wasn't Iceman so cool? I mean, I always wanted his powers. Of course, I was in love with Firestar, but Spider-Man was the best. I had the comic books. I just was, was taken by him. Spider-Man and his amazing friends, Iceman and Firestar. When Jeff Lynne, the remarkable leader of the Electric Light Orchestra, was just a wee lad, one of his favorite memories was a 1950s era children's record called Sparky's Magic Piano, uh, in which a talking piano communicates with a young lead character, Sparky, through an effects unit. Sparky's Magic Piano was actually the second in a series of audio stories that were very educational and musical, featuring an array of instruments, including uh, classic piano pieces. It was written and produced by Alan Livingston. Oh, Sparky. Now, the talking magic piano voice was created by Sonovox. Sonovox, uh, the first true commercial talk box, uh, became widely used in popular music, uh, most prominently by Peter Frampton and the late Roger Troutman. Lynn, who is one of those elite artists and elite producers, brilliant at virtually everything he does, reflected back on his love of Sparky's magic piano to create his own character for children of all ages to enjoy in the form of one of the most uplifting songs ever recorded. He named his character and his song, Mr. Blue Sky. The story of Mr. Blue Sky began uh, in the early spring of 1977. Uh, Jeff Lynn was struggling to come up with uh, material for the next ELO album, languishing over a bad case of writer's block. Jeff and the band thought that a change of scenery would help uh, you know, him get out of his creative funk. So they rented a bunch of equipment from a music shop in Geneva and drove up to a chalet in the beautiful Jura Mountains of the Swiss Alps. So they set up the gear to work out of the chalet and hope for fresh inspiration. Now for several weeks, instead of uh, basking in the spectacular scenery, the area was shrouded with dark clouds that uh, obscured uh, a view of those breathtaking mountains. Uh, Jeff Lynn found the conditions to be gloomy and depressing. His mental stagnation lingered, of course. He spent more time at a nearby pub than working on new music, and uh, the days and weeks began to mount with no progress on developing songs for the record. One morning, Jeff Lynn woke up, and miraculously, the heavens had opened. Uh, he stepped out of a chalet to the exhilaration of a clear blue sky and the stunning majesty of the Alps. The splendor of that glorious day inspired the conceptualization of Mr. Blue Sky. In the sky there ain't a cloud in sight. From that moment on, Jeff Lynn broke out of his funk and got on a serious roll. He knocked out 13 songs 
over the next two weeks that followed. Now, the lineage of Jeff Lynn's emergence goes back to the 1960s, when he was a member of the Birmingham, uh, England band, The Idol Race. His passion for a multi-genre approach began to materialize with his next band, The Moot. Now, after the move disbanded, Lynn segued into the progressive rock Radiance of ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra, a band that he formed in 1970 with uh, Roy Wood and Bev Bevan. Uh, ELO's breakout hit in the UK was a carryover from the move that was titled 10538 Overture. That went to uh, number nine in 1972. <laughs> Two years later, ELO had their breakthrough in America with a crazy cool eight-minute hybrid of Beethoven's Immortal Symphony No. 5 and Chuck Berry's Roll Over Beethoven in 73. Beethoven. And the dreamy Sgt. Pepper-flavored ballad, Can't Get It Out of My Head. That went to number nine on the Billboard Hot 100. That was in 1974. Great song. Mr. Blue Sky was recorded in Munich, Germany in 1977 with a wild arrangement full of uh, eclectic construction and bold instrumental changes. It became the track that uh, Jeff Lynne described as the song that best exemplified his vision for the Electric Light Orchestra, a modern interpretation of classical music with uh, lush melodies and symphonic rock bluster with Jeff Lynne as the group's chorus master. <laughs> Now, as we go into the song breakdown, I want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, my favorite eyeglasses brand. If you need some new glasses or sunglasses, you need to go to zenny.com and design your own. You're sure to find a color or a style that you're going to love, and you can add on great features. Uh, my favorite is Blue Blocks that protects your eyes from digital blue light that we come into contact with daily. Check it out today. Please tell us why you had to hide away for so long. Now, the working title for Mr. Blue Sky was actually Thou Shalt Not Number 7. That is significant to know because Mr. Blue Sky was a part of a multi-piece movement that occupies all 19 minutes of Side 3 on ELO's Out of the Blue album. The track was arranged in the body of the concerto for a rainy day beginning around 13 minutes and 40 seconds on Side 3. Now, the tempo change in the closing section where the song slows down and the operatic vocals cease is not technically part of Mr. Blue Sky. It's actually the uncredited ending for the concerto for a rainy day. <music> Mr. Blue Sky is often described as being Beatlesque. After all, John Lennon himself once referred to ELO as the son of the Beatles, which uh, probably given Jeff Lynne and the band more praise than criticism. Harmonically, Mr. Blue Sky shares an unusual first four chords rhythm with McCartney's yearning classic, Yesterday. Yesterday. There are also similarities with the Lennon composed I Am the Walrus. comparison to the staccato bass line in the chorus of Hello Goodbye. Of course, along with the panting background vocals over a pounding piano line a la A Day in the Life. Looking up, I noticed I was late. Lynn took the pronounced resemblance to the Beatles from critics without batting an eye. Who would? Uh, because uh, he was admittedly a devoted Beatles worshiper and was certainly influenced by the Fab Four. Here's the deal. I think every artist that recorded music after 1964 was influenced in some fashion by the Beatles, whether they realized it or not or admitted it or not. Of course, I've mentioned this before, out of the hundreds of interviews that I've had the opportunity to do, I mean, I'd say that 80% or more have said that the Beatles were the reason that they first got into music or even joined a band. 
Despite the parallels to the Fab Four, ELO added to the Beatles' pomposity to establish their own distinction. The original album version of Mr. Blue Sky begins with the tuning of a transistor radio that locks into the voice of a DJ announcing the forecast for a beautiful day. And after that weather report, it's a big old blast of ELO rock exultation that instantly puts us in a great mood. It's one of the original three members of the band, drummer Bev Bevan. Uh, he was invaluable to the ELO sound, and that included his unique ingenuity in the recording process. Uh, Bev Bevan was trying to find something that would punctuate the rollicking rhythm of Mr. Blue Sky. He actually tried a couple of different objects before finding a very unorthodox solution. The ting cowbell-like sound in Mr. Blue Sky, that's actually a real fire extinguisher that was in the studio to comply with the fire safety code. Bevan tapped on the side of the red extinguisher with a piece of metal and voila, he created the sound that he was searching for. Now, besides being an amazing veteran drummer and a maestro of improv, Bevan can do one heck of a Tarzan yell. Of course, demonstrated his special talent for uh, ululation on Jungle, another cut that was on ELO uh, out of the blue record. Bev Bevan is credited with producing the sound of the fire extinguisher on Mr. Blue Sky and the Tarzan from Jungle in the album's liner notes, if you check that out. You know, it's really amazing how the sunshine in a clear blue sky can not only warm the earth, but also warm the human spirit. The ecstasy that Jeff Lynn felt on that fateful sunny day in the Swiss Alps, it's just a sensation that we can all relate to. Lynn's wonderfully inspired composition puts us in that moment of bliss and sets up the story superhero, Mr. Blue Sky, who introduces himself in the song Second Bridge, speaking to us in a magic voice process by a vocoder. Lynn's Mr. Blue Sky character resurrects Sparky's beloved magic piano from Jeff's uh, sublime childhood memory. Sparky. Sparky. The musical arrangement is uh, just elaborate and imaginative. But the lyrics of Mr. Blue Sky are simple and innocent, making it easy to visualize the grandeur of, of Lynn's narrative. The clouds dissipate, and Mr. Blue Sky appears to brighten and uplift the world. It's just a heartwarming children's audiobook over the theatrical score performed by Jeff Lynn and the Electric Light Orchestra. <laughs> Mr. Blue Sky's day comes to an end, and soon comes Mr. Knight, who is creeping over with his hand on your shoulder. But we'll remember Mr. Blue Sky and uh, look forward to his glorious return. There is a second vocoded part at the end of Mr. Blue Sky that is often uh, misinterpreted by listeners as repeating Mr. Blue Sky. However, uh, the electronic voice is actually saying, please turn me over, which is a witty instruction for vinyl record users to turn the disc over to play the next side. The original recording of Mr. Blue Sky features the superb musicianship of the classic lineup of the Electric Light Orchestra, along with some very special collaborators. Uh, Bev Bevan on drums, percussion, backing vocals, and uh, of course the aforementioned fire extinguisher. Richard Tandy with the grace and finesse of his swirling piano parts. Electric piano, a synthesizer, vocoder, and uh, working with Jeff Lynn on the orchestral arrangement. Kelly Grucut, uh, bass and backing vocal, and the double cello vibrance of one Hugh McDowell and Melvin Gale give the, the track a spicy panache. Lewis Clark was the orchestra conductor and the director of the German String Orchestra on Mr. Blue Sky. 
And of course, superstar, brilliant, the always brilliant Jeff Lynne performing lead and backing vocals, lead and rhythm guitars, and co-creating the tracks, thrilling orchestral and choral arrangements. I gotta tell you, we'll have many more features on ELO and Jeff Lynne, who is one of rock's, like I said, omnipotent luminaries. He's worked so much magic in the annals of popular music that he deserves a series all his own, really. So look out for more stories about his amazing gift and the music that he created, hopefully an in-depth interview. We're gonna work on that. Jeff Lynne's prodigious talent uh, shines in every facet of Mr. Blue Sky, including a deaf guitar solo in the track's first bridge. Mr. Blue Sky was the second single released from Out of the Blue following the lead 45 turn to stone. The track had uh, stellar success in the UK during its first run, climbing to number six, but it peaked at a disappointing number 35 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in America. Uh, ironically, Mr. Blue Sky, a song about a picturesque sunny day, was released in the dead of a drab winter in Europe where it flourished. And it was put out in the heart of the summer season in the US where it barely broke the top 40. It's very interesting how that works. A big reason why Mr. Blue Sky was not as successful in America in 1978, though, is because when the song was released as a domestic single uh, for radio, ELO was actually in the middle of changing distribution in North America from United Artists to CBS. The single was likely uh, caught in the shuffle between the two companies, which resulted in you know, weak, diluted promotion and marketing campaign in North America. Now, the so-called solo version of Mr. Blue Sky was recorded over a seven-year period between 2001 and 2008 at Jeff Lynne's home studio in Los Angeles. The song was recorded in a studio a third time in 2012 because Jeff Lynne wasn't very happy with the original version and contended that the song needed, uh, you know, more punch. Since its initial release, Mr. Blue Sky has more than certainly dwarfed its original chart position, definitely outperformed a majority of hit songs from that time. Great song, always stands the test of time as we talk about here a lot. Mr. Blue Sky has been placed in commercials for JetBlue Airlines. We'd like to thank you for not flying today and choosing the jet with JetBlue. Volkswagen, Sears, Guinness TV in Ireland, an ad for Target in Australia. And in 2021, the 2012 version was licensed in a heavily aired spot for Adobe. In movies, Mr. Blue Sky fired up theater crowds during the opening credits of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That was in 2017, and it was on the best-selling soundtrack. And get this. The song was used as a wake-up call for astronauts on NASA STS-118, the Space Shuttle Endeavor. It was also used for the STS-132 Space Shuttle Atlantis for Commander Chris Ferguson. Mr. Blue Sky never fails to elevate our souls and turn our, our darkest days into shining rejuvenation. It's no wonder that uh, listeners of the UK station Greatest Hits Radio overwhelmingly voted it the happiest song ever. That was in a poll conducted in 2020. Mr. Blue Sky was a, a make-believe superhero created by one of the rock era's real-life superheroes, Jeff Lynn, and the song continues to uplift every new generation it's a song we need for these times for sure. Leave us a comment about the great Jeff Lynne ELO and this song. What are your memories of it? What other ELO classics should we break down here? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, we do invite you to become a full-time member of this music community by clicking on the subscribe button below. Also make sure to check us out on our Patreon link. Help us keep the music alive. Till next time, three chords and the truth, my friend.